Hello. Okay, so this begins our course of videos, um, being in meditation. This will be being in meditation number one. And the idea behind the being in meditation group, um, for those of you who are involved in the Facebook group, or those of you who may be watching this channel individually, is creating um, a series of videos for people who've never meditated before, but who are interested in beginning. So we're gonna start with the very first, very first steps of meditation. And one of the prime ingredients of meditation, one of the prime, the, the cornerstone of meditation is the breath. The breath is um, intimately linked with the mind. Um, they're very, very keyed. And you can see this in everyday life in simple situations such as when you're in a calm, reasonable, sort of steady state of mind, the breathing is normal. The breathing goes all the way down into the lungs and comes back out in kind of an equal basis. There's an easy flow in, there's an easy flow out. Notice what happens when you become agitated or full of fear or angry or upset or something is the breathing becomes shallow. It doesn't go down all the way into the lungs. It actually goes to the middle of the chest and then comes right back out again. Um, and you see that in extreme cases when someone's really upset and they begin to pant and they're almost like, <laughs> and people go, oh my God, breathe, breathe. And that's exactly correct. That's exactly what's going on. The mind is agitated and the breath is working very quickly, in and out quickly, and it's not going down very deep. That's a problem because they feed into each other. And if the mind is agitated, the breath follows. If the breath becomes agitated, the mind becomes agitated. They're intimately linked with each other. Often some people, when they get to that agitated state, um, pass out. Um, and that's because when you're breathing shallowly, the rest of the lungs, you're probably only bringing it down the air into the bronchial tubes, and you're not really getting it much into the lungs. You're getting some, but you're not getting very much. So the blood becomes a little starved for oxygen. So when we're angry and we're upset, we're actually suffocating ourselves. We're, we're <laughs> in, a, in a simple and direct way. Yeah, we're suffocating ourselves because we're not getting enough oxygen. Um, that doesn't lead to clear thinking, that doesn't lead to a healthy body, that doesn't lead to healthy oxygen levels in the blood, that makes the body more panicked, the body's not getting oxygen, it becomes more frightened, the body becomes more frightened, the breathing becomes more shallow, and it becomes this vicious circle until one something breaks it. And in some, in some cases, it's people actually passing out <laughs> or freaking out. And the, the freak out thing is a way to try to assert some kind of control over of the situation because you feel like you're losing or have lost control. So in either case, or any case, it's not healthy and it's not working very well. Um, when someone is in, ex, in an extreme state of calm, um, not so, probably a stronger word, that word extreme is probably a little strong, if somebody's in a really deep state of calm, you're standing by a lake shore and you're, the, the air has settled down for the evening, it's sunset time and the lake is flat like glass and there's a slight breeze and so on. And you're looking across the lake at, the, at a big red sun going down, something like that. Standing in the mountains somewhere, looking out across the valley, and so on, anything like this where there's a, a really beautiful sense of connection with nature and a sense of calm, the breath is very slow and very calm and it goes deep and so on. And often you find yourself sighing in those kinds of situations. There's a deep kind of And that's the body getting rid of put some pent up tension and so on, but it also helps the mind to calm. So breath and mind are, as I said, intimately linked. And this is why breathing is the foundation of meditation. So if you're thinking about meditating, you're wanting to learn meditation, we're gonna start with some facts about breath and why it's so important to breathe in a proper manner and why it is important to breathe, which means to breathe 
deeply, to fill the lungs completely and to release it slowly. Um, some important facts about breath in terms of how much we need it compared to some of the other things that we need, such as food and water. The body can survive roughly about 30 days without food. It can survive roughly three weeks without water. We will only survive three minutes, three minutes without oxygen. So it's interesting that the denser, heavier things we need less of, or it takes longer for us to reach a critical point if we don't get it, if we don't have it. If water is in the middle, you need water, but you can last up to three weeks without water, which seems pretty extreme, but it, I, I, I looked this up. And only three minutes. If you stop, that's why if, um, someone who's choking, you have to get to them very quickly. Um, because in three minutes, the brain will, 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 will die in three minutes without oxygen. So an interesting fact to consider. The breath is more important. We think of it much less important than food or water, but it's exactly the reverse of what we think. We think that we need food first, water, and breathing is just this thing. For most of us, it's an unconscious thing. And this is the point about meditation is you're actually becoming conscious breathers. You're learning how to breathe consciously. This has enormous effects and benefits further on down the line when you're learning meditation and some of the more uh, advanced levels of meditation because no matter how far up the ladder you go in terms of um, advanced forms of meditation, the breath is the foundation. Okay, so we learn what to do with the breath um, all the way through for, with very simple levels, building up, building up, building up with very complicated things we do with the breath, breathing in certain manners, breathing with certain depths and so on, controlling the breath in a certain way, and also controlling the pause between breaths, which is really, really, really interesting. The pause between breaths in terms of meditation is almost as important as the breath, if not as important as the breath itself. We don't breathe <gasps> like that. There's a pause in between. We breathe in. There's a pause before the exhalation. And then we breathe out. There's a pause before we inhale. The more we advance with meditation, the more we advance even with just calmness, and I'm going to avoid using all the Sanskrit and Pali terms and different complicated terms because this, as, a, as we mentioned, this is a course for people who just want to learn how to meditate. I don't want this to be affiliated with any of the traditions that I've been involved with um, just because it makes it's, it becomes complicated and who needs to learn Sanskrit words and all that sort of thing. This, so this is about doing it. This is about doing it, understanding what we're doing without getting caught up in a lot of, um, a lot of technical terms. Um, I think that's unnecessary and just distracting when we're just beginning. But those two points at the top and the bottom of the breath are absolutely important. Um, they kind of give the body and the mind a reset and kind of turn it into an expectation for what's to follow. So we breathe down and then there's a pause and then we breathe out and there's a pause and we kind of anticipate the in-breath and we breathe in, down, and then we anticipate the in-breath and so on, up and down. And so makes a big difference. And what you find is as you go along, the calmer you get and the slower the breath becomes the longer those pauses are. And what we would ask anyone who's beginning their meditation is to be aware. You don't have to focus really heavily, but just be aware of those pause moments between breaths. They're just as important as the breath. So I'm going to just finish with a very simple, simple, simple first meditation that's always given. 
And this is the first part of what's often known as mindfulness of breathing. And it's a very, very, very simple thing. And the next video, of course, we'll just keep building and building and building and, and adding more to the breath and so on. But the first one, I think, is the best way to start is to, you can close your eyes if you wish. For most people, that's probably a good idea. But if you find that you're the kind of person that when you close your eyes, you start to get sleepy, get a little, you know, your mind starts to drift, you get into kind of a waking dream state, then focus your eyes on the floor or something. If you're, if you're sitting in a chair um, or sitting on a, a meditation cushion on the floor or whatever, on a yoga mat, focus on something in front of you Hopefully nothing too complicated like a Persian carpet with lots of details in it or something. I mean, if you want, lay a towel in front of you that's one solid color or something, but just something blank. But just focus, just look down at that and, and not focus on it, but just let the light still come into you to keep you awake. If you find that you're a person that tends to get sleepy um, or, uh, you know, you get into uh, dreaming, you want to do, you want to do that. So simply, you, what you want to do anytime you're meditating is the spine should be straight, absolutely straight. So what you don't want to do is sit in a chair. You don't want to sit back in a chair uh, with your back against a chair and the spine kind of curves at the bottom and so on and the neck maybe curves a little forward and so on. You want the spine to be straight. You, the spine is straight. There's much more attention, but also it gives the lungs full capacity to open and to flush. So you're really doing a lot for yourself, excuse me, for doing that. So sit either, if you're sitting in a chair, sit on the edge of a chair um, with your feet flat on the ground. Don't cross your legs on the floor. Put your feet flat on the floor, okay? Just rest your hands on your thighs if you want. You can put your hands like this in your lap and just sit, sit it in your lap, whatever is comfortable. But you want to be spine erect, chin in slightly, because what that does is helps to straighten the neck in line with the spine and that's gonna be a better thing for your attention. No, don't tuck your chin in, you know, avoid extremes. You don't wanna tuck your chin in, just tuck it a little bit. You don't wanna to do too much. And then, as I said, close your eyes or just stare ahead of you at something that's that's blank, uh, a sheet of paper, blank, some, something that's not gonna like get your mind thinking, oh, that's pretty pattern. Oh, look at those colors there. What, you know, the mind does that. The mind loves to comment on everything that it sees and you'll, be, you'll become more and more aware of the mind's um, constant commentary. It's kind of like a sportscaster who's giving you play by play all the time. It's like, you're seeing it, but this guy wants, still wants to keep talking about it. So you, you, you wanna get the commentator to be quiet. Um, so spine straight, feet flat on the floor, or if you're sitting on a Zafu a meditation cushion, sit forward, cross-legged, sit comfortably. You don't have to go into really complex lotus postures and so on. If you can, great. If you're someone that's studied yoga and you're used to sitting in those positions, fine. But you don't need to. You can sit on a chair or a couch, but sit on the edge because we don't want to get into that sitting back thing, as I mentioned. Hands on your lap, hands on your thighs. Do what you want with your eyes, whatever works better for you. Experiment, see what works better. See if the eyes closed works better or whether the uh, eyes open works better. I suggest eyes closed, but um, bear in mind what we talked about in terms of um, if you're the kind of person that maybe gets um, too dreamy, too sleepy, too dull. Um, and you have want to avoid that because dull, dullness <laughs> is not meditation. It, it's, it's going to sleep. So here we go. All you do is focus on the air, the sensation of the air going in and of your nostrils. That's it. So just breathe in normally. Pause. And breathe out. All you're looking at is just focus the mind on the sensation of the breath at the nostrils. And just focus on it. The mind wanders, just bring it back. The mind wanders bring it back. The real thing is not trying to, uh, to stop the mind from doing its wandering and its chatting. The real thing is noticing that the mind is chattering or wandering off. If you can do this for two to three minutes only, that's all you need to do to start two to three minutes a couple times a day or once a day, 
don't set yourself unrealistic expectations. Don't be setting up uh, expectations of, I'm gonna do 20 minutes, I'm gonna do 30 minutes, I'm gonna be a real, no, don't do that to yourself. Um, you'll end up really frustrated uh, and making yourself crazy. Um, and you'll hate the experience. And if we start to hate meditation when we're starting, uh, you're not gonna sit, you're not gonna do it, you won't wanna do it. So you want it to be comfortable. You are having a great amount of success if you notice that the mind has wandered off. And that's really key, that you've noticed it instead of actually getting caught up in it and being dragged off by it. If you notice that the mind is wandering, you're doing really good. That's actually really good meditation. It really is. So um, try that uh, and see how that goes. Uh, try that maybe one, two, three minutes a day. Once a day, you want to make it pleasant. Try and do your meditation in the same place every day, uh, same place in your home. Uh, find a comfortable spot, uh, a spot that's clean, uh, that's avoiding a lot of direct light. You don't want it to be too dark, um, but you don't want light shining in your eyes. Preferably, for reasons which I'll explain later, face east. It's actually a better meditation experience if you face east. It has to do with the electromagnetism and the, the way the planet spins and the way things, electromagnetic fields move as the Earth is spinning. When you face east, you're actually facing into it, and it actually is better for the concentration of the mind, believe it or not. But try it in other directions, you will see that it's a different experience than if you don't face east. So find a comfortable spot, make sure it's clean, do the same spot every day, a, a nice safe place. Um, try not to do it in the bedroom where the mind is associating the room with sleep, So because you might have a dull experience when you do that. But if you can't, if there's no other way, then just do that. Just then make that spot in the bedroom that you're doing it in or wherever, in the living room, in the kitchen, whatever. Just make that spot, trying to think of that spot as that's your meditation spot. That's where you do it, okay? And try it, do it the same way every time. So if you're sitting in a chair, sit in a chair. If you're gonna sit on the floor, sit on the floor. So that you build up less distraction by trying to figure out oh, what's a novel place where I can go do it. Don't do that. Find the same spot every day. The, the, the less you distract the mind with details and so on, um, the better it's going to be. So again, just feeling the air coming in and out of the nostrils. If you focus on that, you will find the mind will calm. Just getting the mind to slow down and getting the breath to slow down because if you slow down the breath, you will slow down the mind. Don't worry so much about the mind. It's easier to control the breath than it is to control the mind. The mind's nature is to think, let it do its job, but you can kind of, there's a way to control it without controlling it. And that's by controlling the breath. And that's the secret. And that's the secret to all meditation, whether you're just beginning with this mindfulness of breathing at the nostrils, or whether you're doing some really advanced high level meditation. So let's start with that. And the next video, we'll be talking about extending this breathing. And um, so it's going to be breathing for a little while because as I said, that's the foundation. You build a firm, firm, firm foundation. Um, you're gonna be able to erect a very beautiful and very strong and beautiful, powerful structure after. So try that out and we'll see you next time. Good luck with it. Okay, any questions, you can fire them at me through the usual channels. All right, take care.